we talked about we talked about at the conference overall. We talked about stability. We talked about making sure that the third world, the uh, excuse me, third world, the uh, the the, uh, the southern hemisphere had access to change. It had access. We, it wasn't confrontational at all. You came up with thank, thank, thank you, everybody. This ends the press Thanks. conference. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Wow, yeah, woo! Four more years, four more years, said the corporate globalists that of course are able to do whatever they want with you because of him. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. My name's Zuckerdowski here of wearechange.org and there's a lot of absolutely wild, crazy, eye-popping news to get into today as we have some big news coming from New Mexico where there looks like to be a major overreach of power that is extremely dangerous for this republic as of course the corporate media is now setting their eyes and attacking Elon Musk for uh, trying to de-escalate and, and, and stop a war. Yep, you heard that correctly. We're going to be talking about that plus a lot more. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing, you could get it on the bestpoliticalshirts.com. And Atlas, excuse me, ma'am, can I please have you on the other side? Thank you very much. You will get a big liver treat after this. That is my co-host. And the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast is, of course, from the President of the United States after a very awkward press conference from the President of the United States in Hanoi, Vietnam, where Joe Biden called climate change deniers, quote, lying dog-faced pony soldiers, and then awkwardly talked about John Wayne and Indians while only taking questions from approved stenographers pretending to be journalists with their pre-approved scripted questions that, of course, he had answers to on pieces of paper. Oh, yeah. The president of the United States also just said this. And uh, let's see. I'm just following my orders here. Uh... Staff, if anybody haven't spoken, I ain't calling on you. I'm calling. I said that five questions. I need it. Be away. I'm taking my orders here, and uh, obviously that is the perfect slogan for his presidential campaign, as he is still running to be president of the United States for an additional five plus years. How? Is that going to be happening? I have no idea. But on the current trajectory where we are right now with the establishment rigging everything in the Democratic Party's favor, that's probably going to be the next leader of the free world as the Democrats are seizing more and more powers now under, of course, emergency procedures, just like the governor of New Mexico, a far leftist, Karen, tyrannical, bureaucratic Becky that came out and issued an executive order or AKA a decree suspending people's ability to legally be able to defend themselves with particular tools that she now arbitrarily outlawed for the next 30 days because of a quote, national health emergency. Yes, this grubby handed bureaucratic Becky just banned self-defense tools under an emergency public health order regardless if citizens have previously gained licenses or permits to do so which she unequivocally revoked based on her own demands and wishes this is an and an, an again something that is extremely extrajudicial and what michelle luna grinsham is doing is in my opinion just essentially testing the waters to see what they could get away with when it comes to abusing their emergency powers under a health emergency 
as of course, you don't see them banning forks because people are getting heart attacks. You don't see them banning seed oils. You don't see them banning almost a dozen plus chemicals that's in our food and water supply that's banned almost everywhere else in the world. You don't see them doing that. As of course, it's also malpractice for medical professionals that leads to a tremendous amount of deaths. You don't see them doing anything about that. Astrazine, all the chemicals in the drinking water that have literally been linked to cancer. No, 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 that's totally fine. A citizen's ability to be able to defend themselves, that's where we draw the line here, as of course, if you look at the statistics of, of what people actually die from, what, uh, it's, it's not related to all the propaganda and disinformation that is spewed by far leftists that are using emotionally laden psyops in order to try to eviscerate more of your liberties and rights away from you. As of course, we have to also remember that it was the same Democrats that not so long ago heavily favored fining, imprisoning critics of big pharma and even overwhelmingly wanted and supported policies that would take children away from parents if they didn't give their child to big pharma as experiments and guinea pigs. As it's also fair to say that the DOJ and the justice system in America has been heavily politicized to the point where Republicans who shook a fence, tore down a fence, get sentenced to 17 years in jail while Democrats that killed a Republican get only five years in jail. These are the cases of two particular individuals, one of them, of course, being Joe Biggs, another, a man who literally murdered another person because of his political beliefs and is now only going to be in jail for five years. You add that with all the charges now being pressed on politicians, legal teams, lawyers, aides, and individuals surrounding politicians that the establishment doesn't like. This as it's clear that these charges are meant to have a political outcome in the next presidential election. And when you add all of that to the pot of, of Democrats saying, hey, it's an emergency, we have to take away your ability to defend yourself, leads us in a very precarious situation to say the least. Not a very good one, historically speaking, which we could only hope and pray de-escalates and stops the larger pendulum swing, which is going back and forth more and more violently. And sadly, a lot of the ingredients that are being added on to this big cooking pot are only making the situation worse for everyone. But hey, even though people are being, uh, you know, censored, deleted, arrested, and prosecuted for their political opinions, at least still we could wear t-shirts like the one that I'm wearing right now and others that you could get on the bestpoliticalshirts.com. One of them that of course reads, you can't comply your way out of tyranny. Another fan favorite of mine is, if you trust the government, you don't know history. And the one that I'm wearing right now, which usually gets a lot of people to chuckle and laugh, saying people will forget your words, people will forget your accomplishments, but no one will forget that you voted for Joe Biden. As of course, it's fair to say that this larger administration that he represents as a puppet is clearly doing a lot of damage to the U.S. Constitution, to the rule of law, and destroying any semblance of peace and prosperity which we used to have before. Again, non-violence, peaceful resistance is, I think, one of the few ways out of this. There's a lot of people disenfranchised. There's a lot of people losing hope, but I think it's important to make people realize that they're not alone. And one of the best ways to do that is with a t-shirt. That's why I started this company along with, of course, being fully demonetized. And uh, this is one of the ways that we survive, that we prosper, that we continue going and operating as an independent media organization that is fully supported by you. This is also a Fed fan favorite here of uh, a, a depiction of the Federal Bureau of Investigations doing what they do best. That shirt's probably going to get me rated. We have another uh, fan favorite here that says, uh, if you need violence to enforce your ideas, then your ideas are worthless. I absolutely agree with that. And again, you want to do your lazy form of activism. You want to let people know that they're not alone. Get a shirt on the bestpoliticalshirts.com and also check out wearechange.shop. We have a line of supplements that of course help me out tremendously. I'm already getting some testimonials of some people who bought them that really love them, that really do appreciate them. If your orders are over 50 bucks, you get free shipping on wearechange.shop. Check out the great products that we have available for you there. As of course, we continue on with our main story and that of course is the latest crazy foreign policy that the United States is involved in 
that uh, actor Woody Harrelson kind of characterized uh, very well with his understanding of it in this recent press conference where he said these words. Abominable when a superpower with all this military might, with no provocation, attacks a, a, a country that is, uh, you know, like, like, you know, Iraq, uh, sorry, Afghan, I'm, I'm sorry, Viet, uh, <laughs> Korea, no, sorry, Ukraine. Uh, <laughs> terrible. Uh. This as it's becoming clearer by the day that the United States is involved in, in a larger proxy war between the East and the West, as of course the Atlantic has a very interesting article that is titled, Xi Jinping is done with the established world order, as of course many BRICS nations have been building slowly and surely alternatives to the current U.S. petro world dollar. This as tensions are heating up in Ukraine, which represents the larger battlefield between these larger civilizational crises and clashes that are happening right now, using the poor people there as a way to, of course, try to exert political power and influence for the benefit of the world powers that are represented in that conflict. This as Elon Musk is now being heavily criticized for... Uh, trying to de-escalate that conflict as the Babylon Bee satirically wrote a headline saying, quote, jerkface Elon Musk refuses to help start nuclear war, which is not that far from a lot of the corporate media's attacks on him recently, which uh, very interestingly happened within 24 hours of his backlash against the ADL, which uh, I don't think is, is an accident here, as of course, Elon Musk and the ADL had a big public fight. Now, all this information behind the scenes is coming out against Elon Musk with, of course, the corporate media, CNN, MSNBC, The Times of Israel, Rolling Stones, NBC, The Verge, all jumping on it with many other corporatist institutions that, of course, are trying to viciously tear him down when, in my opinion, he made the right decision here when it came to, of course, disconflict and stopping the destruction of the Russian naval fleet in Sevastopol, as, of course, this entire conflict in Ukraine has been surmised by many political experts as the battle for the Sevastopol warm ocean port that Russia has, as it is a key strategic military base for the Russians that a lot of people believe this entire war is currently all centered around. As the Ukrainians wanted to use Starlink systems as a way to wipe out that entire fleet, which of course would have been a major escalation, and according to some analysts, led to a tremendously dangerous situation, which would have Russia strike back in a very aggressive manner, including the least of which would be dropping a nuclear bomb on Ukraine. And now we have hit pieces like this claiming that somehow Elon Musk is undermining the national security policy of the United States, that he needs to go to prison. Ukrainian government officials are, of course, attacking Elon Musk as well, even though he is providing them free Starlink free internet service, which has had a major effect on this entire conflict. And because he doesn't want to expand it to Russian territory, now, according to Keith Oberman, he must be deported, as this is allegedly aiding Russia. And, and, and again, hyperbolic emotional dribble from seething individuals that do not make any kind of larger coherent strategic point here, but just foam at the mouth with anger. And Elon Musk clarified the situation here about what actually happened, saying, quote, I refuse to act upon a request from Ukraine versus, quote, made a deliberate change to Starlink to thwart Ukraine, which, according to Elon Musk, has never happened, saying specifically, at no point did I or anyone at SpaceX promise coverage over Crimea, adding, moreover, our terms of service clearly prohibit Starlink for offensive military action as we are a civilian system. So they were, again, asking for something that they were expressly prohibited. And, of course, this issue has been painted totally different from the corporate media 
that acts like Elon Musk somehow was an evil villain here and decided to stop Ukraine when in, in reality, Ukraine was making a demand that Elon Musk said that he would never meet. And therefore now he's being heavily criticized for doing so, which I do not believe is the right approach here, is the right move here. As of course, Russia has stated before, if its territory is struck, they will answer back with very aggressive force as even the Daily Mail is reporting today that Ukraine's new long-range missile system technology is going to bring us closer to World War III. And I would have to agree with the Daily Mail here with their assessments of it, as of course, it's, it's important to understand here, there is always a tit-for-tat situation. There is always retaliation. There is always escalation, especially when it comes to graver situations that clearly do not benefit anyone but the military industrial complex as of course it's important to to understand here that who's winning out of all of this it's definitely not the ukrainian people it's definitely not the russian people it's definitely not the poorest people in the world that now have to deal with larger energy costs because of this conflict less food more food supply chain instability which is being spurred on by this larger geopolitical conflict which could have ended many times but that has been denied to us many times because of Western intervention in this conflict, as it, of course, is financing it, bankrolling it, and sending an entire generation of young Ukrainians to die. And I ask for what? For who? Who benefits off of all of this as there should be detente? There should be negotiations. There should be de-escalations in this entire matter and for the bloodthirsty neoconservative media to attack elon musk here i believe is absolutely totally unfair as this situation could spiral out of control at any moment at any time just like we saw a few months ago specifically with what happened with poland with polish citizens dying because of a ukrainian missile defense system which the ukrainians automatically tried to blame on russia thankfully cooler minds prevailed here we waited to find out exactly what would happen as of course we now face a very similar situation with romania this as this conflict probably might last a very long time potentially even 10 years as we've been telling you this from the very beginning as conflicts are very easy to start and very difficult to stop and i think a lot of individuals more than ever desperately need it to stop will it well what do you think what is your prediction for when this conflict will actually end let me know down in the comment section below i hope soon the tremendous loss of life of so many innocent human beings is just absolutely atrocious. It's sickening. It's disgusting. And something that I, I, I hope ends very soon. That's just my particular take. That's just my particular opinion. If you think I'm wrong, let me know why. If you think I'm right, share this video with your friends and family members. It is more imperative than ever. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. And that's why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.